Here I am in the middle of suburbia, highway just behind me, and just a little bit away, we've got a stingless native beehive waiting to be rescued. Welcome to Envirogy. So what we're going to do is recreate this hive, like re reconstitute it, yeah. and see if we can get the bees to start flying in it. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think we can just close the lid and put the box, and, and so they cannot have their, their hole inside and they will enter to whatever. They will? They okay. Yeah. Do we need to put some resin or something near the hole? Yeah, we can put some of the resin, yeah, because they can smell it. So now what we will do to save all these foragers that are freaking out around us, we will put this lid back on and on top of that we're going to put the new box with some of their resin around the entrance so these foragers recognize it as their new house and they can come back in so we don't lose them. Do you want to scrape off some of that? Is yeah. there any point doing yeah, that? Yeah, that's very good, yeah, because this is their entrance, so yeah. The resin comes from different trees, so each tree will produce red resin, orange resin, yellow resin, white, brown resin. So we're ready, do you want me to close it? And you... Yes please, uh, do you want to play with that a little yeah. bit, that entrance? Yeah. So what I did is putting some of the resin in the entrance so the foragers recognize it. And ready? <coughs> yes, perfect. That's the entrance hole. So they don't enter in their old entrance, but they enter in the new entrance. So we're going to put that right there going to put that right there. Yeah, perfect. There we go. If you can... They're entering. <laughs> they're going. Are they? They enter, they smell, they're like, this is weird. They go out again, and then they go inside again. Good job. Well done, Francesco. Yeah. We'll leave it for about half an hour. So what's the time? It's, I reckon, 12.30. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That gives them 40 minutes. Yeah, as much as we can, so yeah. we save. As and we'll save quite a few uh, foragers. Yeah. Well, I think this is a really good enviro tube to do. The last enviro tube, maybe, that I'm doing. Yes. A pretty exciting one. Yeah, 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 awesome. You've never done one? Not a rescue? pit rescue that we filmed. That's amazing. Well, There's a parasite, that big one. It's a syphid fly. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly it came. They, they detect them immediately. Yeah, immediately, yeah. Right. I'm going to okay. seal the hive. They lay their eggs and creep in. Yeah. It's amazing. How long did that take? 10 minutes? Yeah. Nice. Perfect. No casualties. <laughs> no casualties. So is that your first pit rescue? Yeah. Amazing. I loved it. Today is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> this, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why I told you to do this on Thursday. I wanted oh, right. to have a good birthday. You love the bees, don't you? I do. Yes. <laughs> That's my PhD. Yes. That's what I would do for maybe the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, I think we call you a bee tragic. Why? <laughs> yeah, it, it sort of means that uh, you're, you're a bee freak. I need my bee t-shirt. <laughs> bee freak. See, that's good. Even five minutes ago, there are a lot of bees flying around yeah. over there. Now you have them all inside. Really nice. Half an hour ago, we have a lot of foragers flying around because they were freaking out. And now, if you can see, we don't have as many foragers because they are already entering in their new hive, which is what we were expecting for them to do. Okay, well Ooh. done. Yes, well done. Successful. <laughs> so, what an Enviro tube. It's not every day you get to rescue a beehive. If we left it here, Telstra would have come along and gone, dum -de -dum, oh, insects in the hole. Telecommunication companies have to keep the phone lines clean and happy. They have to make sure that the pit's working, so they get rid of the problem. They don't know what the insects are. They don't know whether they sting, bite, whatever. The problem in this case are stingless native bees. It's an absolute tragedy to have a hive die this way. It's actually imperative that we rescue it before this happens. You can see what Francesco did. He's very calm and deliberate. He's not rushing in, he's cutting away from the brood. He's making sure that there's food resources. And then, once we've done it, we leave the hive in situ. The whole idea, the foragers come back. This is a win-win for the environment. Win for us, we get a native beehive with the right genetics because a lot of our bees originally came from Queensland. So it's really good to get a New South Wales hive and it's good to sort of like learn how to do this. I hope that you watch, you want to rescue a hive. It's not hard to do, but you can see how quickly the pests came around. If you just rescued the hive and left it open, 
you wouldn't have a hive in a month's time, you'd have a box full of maggots. <laughs> so it's really important that you sort of put the gloves on with the hygiene, take your time, cut it around. No loose honey. Don't want loose honey. Just, uh, we can put it in the back of the car. Yeah, no worries. I think, is that safe, the back of the car? Yep. Being able to rescue these bees has been a real thrill. There's a Facebook page. If you join that page and let people know about it, they will send out a rescue team to do the job professionally and then they will donate the hive to a school. Thanks for watching this EnviroTube.